will be discussing a class amphibia very important class but it is the smallest class all right when we study the chordates in chordates it is the smallest class all right but the characters are very very important the first question arises that what is the meaning of the word amphibia amphibia means dual life means they can live on land as well as water and hence they are also called as the amphibia and we are talking today about the general features of this class now golden age of the amphibians where the amphibians has ruled on this earth all right so the golden age of the amphibian was a period known as the carboniferous period all right now as the name is indicating amphibia means dual life amphibia can live in aquatic environment also as well as they can reside in the terrestrial habitats also that's why they are called as the amphibians now they were the first chordate animals which came out of the water but are not able to live permanently on the land why because they depend on water for their reproduction again i am repeating these were the first chordate animals which came out of the water but are not able to live on land permanently why because they depend on the water for the purpose of reproduction for the purpose of fertilization as you know very well after the amphibia we will be talking about the class reptiles reptiles were the first true terrestrial animals amphibians can also live on the land but they cannot live on the land permanently because they require water for the purpose of reproduction now they are cold blooded cold blooded means what they are poikilothermals means their body temperature is not constant their body temperature can change according to the ambient environment so they are cold blooded i can say they are poikilothermals now these animals are showing the two important aspects hibernation hibernation and estivation now what are these two important terms hibernation and estivation hibernation means winter sleep means they do not like the low temperature of the winters so they go under the ground and estivation that is summer sleep they also don't like the high temperature of the summers in uh, both cases to prevent themselves from extreme cold and to prevent themselves from extreme heat right they go under the soil and that's why you can see that the frogs are not seen in the summers or the winters the turtle sound of the frogs can be heard only in the raining season all right when they are coming out of the ground so these animals undergo hibernation and estivation to prevent themselves from extreme cold and extreme heat and to overcome the unfavorable condition to overcome unfavorable condition they go under the ground in winters also and in summers also winter sleep is called hibernation summer sleep is called as estivation now body is divided into two parts body is divided into two parts particularly the head and the trunk and tail may be present or absent tail may be present or absent again i am repeating body is divided into head and trunk all right tail may be present in some form may not be present all right now they have two pairs of limbs means four limbs one pair of four limbs and one pair of hind limbs but the number of the digits that is the fingers in the four limbs and the hind limbs are different four limbs have only four digits four limbs have four digits while the hind limbs have five digits means the hind limbs have how many digits five while the four limbs have only how many digits four digits and there are few members there are few members of the class amphibia where the limbs are absent we'll be talking about the order known as the apoda a means absent poda means legs 
in ipoda limbs are absent all right now their skin is very very important because it is meant for respiration now how it is meant for respiration skin is moist very much moist it is smooth it is glandular it is glandular and it is scaleless skin is moist smooth glandular and scaleless and why it is smooth and moist why it is smooth and moist because numerous mucus glands are found on the skin numerous mucus glands are found on the skin and these mucus glands release mucus which moistens the skin and that's why the skin is too much moist and always remember this moist skin will be helpful in the respiration and that's why we can say that respiration in them occur with the help of the moist skin respiration in them occur with the help of moist skin and this is called as cutaneous respiration this is called as cutaneous respiration all right respiration through moist skin is called as cutaneous respiration now pigment cells are also found as chromatophores for coloration now very very important question was asked in exams that they have pigment cells the pigment cells are found as chromatophores pigment cells are found as chromatophores for coloration pigment cells are found as chromatophores for coloration means what few amphibians have the ability to change color there are few amphibians which are having the ability to change color by the expansion and the contraction by the expansion and the contraction of the pigment cell and this ability or this property of the amphibians to change color this is called as metacrosis again very very important asked in neat exams metacrosis this this uh, power of color changing this power of color changing in the case of the amphibian is called as metacrosis now a well developed complete elementary canal is present in them a well developed complete elementary canal is present with in them along with the digestive glands along with the digestive glands but remember this thing that salivary glands all glands are present but salivary glands are absent in frogs salivary glands are absent in frogs all right now let's talk about the excretory system how they excrete what type of the circulatory system is found all right so we'll be discussing few more characters now in the case of the amphibians eyes are having the eyelids eyes have eyelids all right and the very important character of the amphibian is the cloaca what is cloaca elementary canal urinary tract and the reproductive tract do not open separately all these three things elementary canal reproductive tract and urinary tract open in a common chamber and that common chamber is called as the cloaca that common chamber is called as the cloaca very important character now as you have seen that in them the respiration occur with the help of the skin but it's not necessary that always the respiration occur with the help of the skin only respiration may occur in the may occur with the help of the gills say for the larva of the frog known as the tadpole larva respires with the help of the gills when it is in water lungs can also participate in respiration in the mature uh, that is frog and buccopharyngeal cavity also helps in respiration so i can say that respiration can be performed by gills skin lungs and buccopharyngeal cavity all right now if i talk about the heart then heart is three chambered means they have two auricles and one ventricle they have two auricles and one ventricle and sinus venous is present and well developed sinus venous is present and well developed remember this thing that in amphibians uh, sinus venous is present which opens in the which opens in the right auricle which opens in the right auricle all right now rbc is biconvex 
RBC is biconvex, oval and nucleated. Again I am repeating, RBC of the amphibian is biconvex, oval and nucleated. And the largest RBC belongs to this class. Largest RBC. Say for I am quoting example here, Congo eel. Congo eel, it has largest RBC in entire animal kingdom. Right? Largest RBC in the entire animal kingdom, Congo eel. Now, renal portal system and hepatic portal system are present and both are developed. Renal portal system associated with the kidneys and the hepatic portal system associated with the liver. Means in renal portal system, the veins coming from the different parts open in the kidneys and uh, kidneys first and then to the heart and in the hepatic portal system the veins coming from the different parts first open in liver and then opens in the uh, that is the heart all right so renal portal system and hepatic portal system are well developed and present one pair of mesonephric kidneys found see based on position kidneys are of various type pronephric mesonephric metanephric Say for we are the advanced features, so we are having the metanephric kidney, means it is little below. Now, if we talk about the mesonephric kidney, it is little above. And if we talk about the pronephric kidney, it is little more above. So, in them, according to position, one pair of mesonephric kidneys are found. One pair of mesonephric kidneys are found. And remember this thing that they are mostly ureotelic. They are mostly ureotelic. You know what is ureotelic? means they excrete urea they excrete urea a tympanum is present which represents the ear a tympanum present which represents the ear tympanum is present you know what is tympanum it is the eardrum but remember this thing tympanum is present but this can be correlated with this point that tympanum is present but external ear is absent because external ear pinna is the feature of the mammals Alright, so external ear is absent, but they have only the tympanum, right, which is also what is the eardrum. Dicondylic skull, now this is also a very important feature. Dicondylic skull means the skull bear two occipital condyles. The skull bears, the skull bears two occipital condyles. Are you getting dicondylic? Di means two, condyles means condylic. Two occipital condyles present in the skull. That's why the skull is called as dicondylic skull. Skull is called as dicondylic skull. Now, only one ear ossicle present in the middle ear. Say for if we talk about the human beings, we have three ear ossicles in the middle ear. Malleus incus and stapes, M-I-S, malleus incus and stapes. But in them, the middle ear represent only one ear ossicle, right? And that is called as the columella. If we talk about the cranial nerves of the amphibians, then in amphibians there are ten pairs of the cranial nerves. And if we took, uh, if we look over the higher organism, including the human beings, we have twelve pairs of cranial nerves. But amphibians have ten pairs of cranial nerves. Sexes are separate. Male and female are separate. All right. Fertilization is generally external. Fertilization is generally external, and they lay eggs in water. And hence they are oviparous. Oviparous means egg link creatures and they lay egg in water. Alright. Development is indirect. Definitely if the development is indirect then uh, some larva will be there. So in frog it has been seen that tadpole larva is found. And there is one more larva associated with this class and that is known as the exolotl larva. So exolotl larva is found actually in the Salamander. Fine. Now, if we talk about the vertebra, now of course it is also a vertebrate. Amphibian is also a vertebrate. So, vertebra type is procellus. Vertebra type is procellus. What is procellus? The centrum of the vertebra is concave from the anterior side. Is concave from the anterior side, and it is and it is and it is common like this convex from the convex from the posterior side okay centrum is concave from anterior side 
सेंट्रम इज कॉन्केव फ्रॉम एंटीरियर साइड लाइक दिस टाइप एंड कॉन्वेक्स फ्रॉम द पोस्टीरियर साइड सो द वर्टिब्रा टाइप इन द वर्टिबल कॉलम द वर्टिब्रा टाइप इज प्रोसिलस प्रोसिलस वॉट इज प्रोसिलस इन विच द सेंट्रम इज कॉन्केव फ्रॉम द एंटीरियर साइड एंड इट इज कॉन्वेक्स फ्रॉम द पोस्टीरियर साइड और राइट एंड द एंडोस्किलेटन of the class amphibia is made up of the bones but remember this thing that the cranium which is covering the brain cranium is cartilaginous means it is made up of cartilage all right some members show neoteny very very important say for the larva of salamander the larva of the salamander the larva of the salamander shows neoteny so some members shows neoteny in which larva becomes mature and start the act of reproduction again i am repeating what is neoteny some members like the larva exolotl larva of the salamander here the larva shows neoteny in which the larva becomes mature and starts the process of reproduction all right so these were the very very important characters of the class amphibia and one more thing this class amphibia this class amphibia belongs to super class it belongs to super class tetrapoda remember this thing it belongs to super class tetrapoda are you getting so uh, su super class is tetrapoda and the class is amphibia which is the smallest class of the super class tetrapoda so these were important features in the next video we will be also discussing the classification of the amphibians which is also very important and it is not given in the ncrt so keep watching and very soon we will be coming with new video